Hi there, my name is Brian Knight and I'm a journalist or historian and the host of Telefriend Podcast, which is a talk show which features me interviewing a range of different guests about their life, their work and just trying to understand their story. So I'll begin by talking about some of the work that I've been doing uh, this year, especially since lockdown began. So back in March, as lockdown was looming, I was looking for different ways to occupy my time and to stay busy whilst we were all, you know, indoors. And one of the ways um, that I occupied my time was by putting a lot of time into my podcast and really developing it as a platform. So I decided to send out numerous interview requests to people who had always inspired me and who I looked up to. And this included people like Nikki Giovanni, this included uh, Zainab Badawi and Jane Elliott. So, and you know, those are just to name a few. And I wanted to invite them on my platform for a long form interview, usually about an hour, where I would, you know, speak to them not only about their legacy, but trying to understand what's motivated them throughout their careers and throughout their lives. And that's just, that's just been uh, a great way, a great way to spend this year. And I thoroughly enjoyed meeting all of those fascinating people. Another um, branch of work that I've been doing this year is writing for different publications and I've especially been writing about the Black British experience, so looking at landmark trials like the 1970 Mangrove Nine trial, looking at the Race Today Journal and looking at the legacy of the British Black Panthers. And one of the reasons I've been writing about this is because I really think there's a gap in, especially in our national knowledge and especially in the curriculum when it comes to recognizing black British history and the significance um, of these historical events and how they really influence and shape us today. So that's something that I've been trying to do. So the first question that I was sent by Fusion is, what is the driving force behind my work? And I have to say the driving force behind my work is, you know, first and foremost, my passion and my interest in what I do. I don't think I could continue to put out this content, continue with the interviews if I wasn't genuinely interested in the people I'm speaking to and what I'm doing. So my passion is definitely the number one motivating factor in everything I do. Secondly, I think, um, I don't think I know there's um, a lot of excitement in doing something which hasn't really been covered at length before. So especially when I'm writing about the Black British experience, this is something that not a lot of people know about. So I know that the writing that I'm doing, the interviews that I'm conducting, can have a difference in really um, expanding people's knowledge about the subject and hopefully dispelling a lot of preconceptions they had about the history of Black people in Britain. So. You know, that's a, that's a very rewarding factor when you know that you're actually making a difference to, you know, people's education. So I, I, I like that aspect of it. The second question I was said is, how do I overcome adversity? And I have to say, as a journalist, you have to overcome, you know, many setbacks. This is a very competitive career, and especially being a freelance journalist, you know, that's even more setbacks um, on your path. And I have to say, one of the biggest misconceptions um, that I hear from my friends and people around me is they think it's easy. They they see the articles that I'm writing, they see the people that I'm interviewing, and they think it, it, it just happens naturally. And I have to say that, you know, for every article that I get commissioned, for every person I have on the show, I have about a hundred rejection letters. Um, but one of the ways I overcome those rejection emails, overcome any adversity in my life is whilst being passionate about, about being passionate about what I do and, um, you know, really being invested in everything that I do, I try and detach myself from any negativity in my have, uh, any rejection, so that when I don't get 
uh, a project, when I don't get a project commission, when I don't get a guest on my platform, I don't, you know, instantly think that it's about me. I can kind of decenter myself from it. And I think also just about keeping motivated and um, knowing that, you know, just because you've got one, two, three rejections that day doesn't mean that, it doesn't really reflect your ability, doesn't reflect your talent. So, you know, just carry on doing what you're doing. The third question that I've been sent is, what piece of advice would I give to other people starting out their own platform? And I've been thinking about this and I'm going to reuse one of the advice, pieces of advice that I was given and I really carry with me up till today. And that is just get started. I think oftentimes people tell themselves, you know, they can't start their blog. They can't start their Instagram page, they can't start their podcast because they don't have all of the equipment, they don't have the experience, when in reality you have everything you need. If you have a passion for doing it, if you're interested in doing it, that's enough. And I um, advise anyone who has any project that they want to do to just get started and accept that it, it won't be perfect in the beginning, but that's part of the process, part of developing it organically and learning uh, as you go along. So just get started. And finally, I was asked about my biggest achievement this year. And I have to say the biggest achievement I've had this year, aside from just surviving a pandemic, um, I would say it's the impact I've had with my writing, especially when it comes to Black British history. Some of the topics that I've written about, um, you know, have been received very positively. And I've had people come up to me and tell me that they didn't know about the subject before or, um, you know, it's really expanded their knowledge. And I think having that impact and actually making a change and hearing that from other people, that's been the most rewarding thing about this whole process. Um, and in addition to that, I think, some of the biggest achievements, you know, meeting and speaking to some of my idols, that's really been incredible. And I never thought it would happen. And, you know, in one year, it's all happened so quick. So, you know, I'm very proud, very proud of that. Um, so I want to thank Fusion for having me. And I want to, you know, reiterate, if you have anything that you want to get started, if you have that passion project, just get started. Thank you.